Okay, so I see we've got attendees, live attendees filtering in. Welcome everybody. Just give 10 more seconds for others to get into the room and then we will get started. This is when we need that Jeopardy music or something <laughs> next time. Okay, it's one pass, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brianna Sunred. I am in the communications manager, community participation officer for the town. I am joined today by your town manager, Paul Bockelman, Jones Library Director, Sharon Sherry, and Austin Surratt, Jones Library Trustees. I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to um, ask questions today live. We have some questions that were submitted already um, by people. And to do so today, you can raise your hand in Zoom and we'll recognize you and come into a room and ask your question live, or you can use the Q&A function. Um, but before we get to that, I'm going to go around to ask our guests to introduce themselves and um, we'll give Paul a chance to give any general updates on town matters. So take it away, Paul. Great, thank you. I'll try to be brief because I know there's lots to talk about with uh, Austin and Sharon. So thank you both for being here and thank you, uh, Brianna. Quick updates, um, you know, the, in terms of COVID, which is our always our first topic is we have really um, stopped the mask mandate. Um, we have um, maintained certain um, uh, capacity limits in municipal buildings to, uh, that's our latest tool that we're using. The other information that's coming out that came out yesterday is that the university has uh, announced that it will no longer be offering community testing through their Stop the Spread site as of March 31st. That's a decision that the state made. We wanted to keep them open. We advocated for that, as did our state legislators. Uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services said, no, we're closing it as of, we're not giving you any more money as of March 31st. So the university announced that it's closing it. The other two announcements that I think are really exciting is first, Hickory Ridge, we have closed on Hickory Ridge, um, $520,000 for, for a project that was um, valued at $5 million. Uh, a great bargain sale negotiated by Dave Zomack and his team um, and in a, a really uh, honorable um, ownership uh, led by Barry, Barry Roberts. Uh, it's noticed it, interesting in the Gazette uh, a few days ago on, this, on St. Patrick's Day actually, there was a 10 years ago today, Applied Golf, which was the owner of the property had bought the, the Hickory Ridge Golf Course at auction for $1.2 million or some, something like that. So 10 years ago, it was, it was sold for a million dollars at auction. And we were able to get this incredible piece of land for with 150 acres, uh, just a unique parcel, a mile of frontage on the front Fort River. It's, it's gonna help the community forever. Um, and the third thing is just to announce that we do have a great developer, Wayfinders, who will be developing two sites in East Amherst on Belchertown Road and at the East Street School, preserving the East Street School to create 70 units of affordable of, of housing. 60 of those 70 units will be affordable housing, some with very deep affordability. So really terrific project that the town has put forward with a really terrific partner. Um, so that's, those are my quick updates. Great, thank you, Paul. I'm gonna let um, Austin and Sharon introduce themselves and give some general updates about uh, their work on the project. Sharon. Hey, everybody, I'm Sharon Cherry, the director of the library. Before we get into the project, uh, Paul reminded me, um, so regarding the test kits, you know, this partnership that the town has uh, with, with UMass, the library has been a, a, a pickup site. And so this morning, the Amherst ambassadors will be out on our front lawn, basically distributing the, the final test kits that we have. So come on down to the library and, and come get them while, while they're still hot. Um, uh, now I'll let uh, Austin talk a little bit about the project. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, thanks, Paul. And uh, I, I just want to say on behalf, I know of all the residents of Amherst, having Brianna uh, in town doing the work that she is doing is uh, just absolutely wonderful. And we're incredibly grateful to Brianna for her efforts. And if this community chat goes wrong, we're going to blame Brianna. <laughs> but thank thanks, you, Austin. <laughs> so, um, uh, I have the privilege of serving now as chair of the Jones Library Building Committee. Uh, the building committee is uh, an amazingly diverse and interesting uh, group of folks. 
And our work is to shepherd the building project from here until uh, the ribbon cutting and beyond. Uh, our hope, our hope is that we will have a, uh, this project completed and a ribbon cutting in the spring of 2025. Uh, between now and then, we're gonna go through several stages. Uh, the first stage is we're gonna have to review uh, the existing schematics that our architects uh, have prepared and that were the basis of the town council vote and the conversation with the community that resulted in the overwhelming vote on behalf of the project uh, that the town engaged in. Once that is done, we go into design development phase, again with the architects. Throughout those, th this process, we will have opportunities to talk with members of the community, to solicit uh, input from members of the community. Once we've gone through design development, we then go into the construction documents, uh, the bidding phase, and then the very exciting work of actually seeing the renovated and expanded Jones Library um, emerge. So that will that's a little bit about the process. The Jones Library Building Committee has a design subcommittee that's gonna work very closely with the architects uh, making recommendations to the building committee. The building committee will then make recommendations to the town manager and to the board of trustees uh, of the library, the town manager and the board of trustees of the library having joint uh, final say, if you will, about uh, the design of the uh, library. And I'd like to ask Sharon now to say a word about Let's imagine it's uh, April of 2025. What do we hope that people will see and experience and love when they come to the renovated expanded Jones Library? I have to say, uh, this is this. It's such an exciting question to be asked. Um, I wish more people would ask it. Um, I hope you know. Number one, I hope that everybody feels welcome in this new space. Um, it's really exciting to think on you know day one we're going to open the doors, and so th this space is going to be completely accessible. Um, it will be sustainable, uh, net zero ready on day one. And then, you know, the purchase of, of, of offsite renewables will make us net zero. Um, the historic preservation aspect of this project is also super exciting. There are so many gorgeous spaces in the 1928L um, that we're gonna be able to bring back to life and, and again, open the doors and say, please, everybody come on in and, and check it out. Um, function, so that's another huge one that staff are especially really excited about that this new space is gonna be fully functional. It'll be easy to navigate, you know, you know you're gonna go to special collections, It'll be easy to find your way. Um, safe. Safe is another uh, piece of this puzzle. There will be um, a, a, a lot of wide open spaces and a lots of lots of staff oversight. Um, bright, fun children's room. I always think of the children's room of any public library, big or small, it doesn't matter as being very much the heart of that space. It's what's bringing families together into the library. And so we're gonna have this great new space that families can come and enjoy. Um, the teen room, um, you know, when, when we started this project, my daughter was very young and I was very excited that, hey, you're gonna have a teen room. Unfortunately, this has taken a little longer and, and she will have aged out, but this next generation of teenagers, they're gonna have a space that they can call their own um, and they'll be able to help design it and populate it and then it's gonna be so great. Um, you know, the other piece of the puzzle, so ESL Special Collections, the Burnett Art Gallery, these are spaces that are kind of hidden in our building right now, but they're really important programming elements. And again, they'll be easy to find and they'll be they'll be large enough to handle the demand that this community places on it. So those are some of my my fun shout outs. Hey, I, just, I just wanted to say one thing, uh, what we hope will happen when people will walk into the renovated expanded library is they will recognize this library. This will be still the Jones Library. Second, they will understand its centrality in the cultural and social life of our town. Third, they'll see it again as the most democratic space in town, a space for the old and the young, the rich and the disadvantaged for 
English language learners and native speakers. And Sharon will tell you that what we've heard over and over again from our colleagues in towns across the Commonwealth is that when libraries are renovated and expanded, often what they hear on day one is simply wow. And we're looking for some wows in April of 2025. Thank you both. I got some good visuals there. I don't know about the rest of you, but that was really helpful and nice to hear from your perspective. I wanna remind all of our live attendees that we would love to hear from you with your questions, whether you want to raise your hand and ask them live or type them into the Q&A box. I will start with some of the questions that have been previously sent, uh, but please jump in there and raise your hand and ask your questions uh, while we have our special guests on the line. Okay, I do see a hand from Dylan. Dylan, I'm going to invite you into the room if you could introduce yourself and ask your question. Hello, um, I've never used this computer, so let me know if my mic's too loud or anything. Is it is it okay? We can hear you a lot, nice and nice and clear, not too loud. Okay, all right, perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm Dylan Corey. Um, I'm a reporter with the Reminder, um, and I wanted to ask about. Uh, I know that you know in the in the PowerPoint um, and also earlier in the meeting, you guys were talking about how with the renovations, uh, it'll be net zero and um, and one of the more environmentally friendly buildings. So I guess I would ask. Uh, you know, are there any ways in which the renovations to the library itself are going to help with that? And also, I know you said that some of it was purchasing renewable energy. So I would ask, what was that purchase? What did that look like? Um, and, and, and yeah, just kind of information about that. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your question. Sharon? Yeah, so I don't I don't have the chart in front of me. Um, so yes, there are certainly things that will be happening to the building. For example, you know the 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 low hanging fruit is the photovoltaics that will go on uh, on the roof. Um, oh, Austin, I'm going to need help with this. So, so, so Dylan, there are going to be a variety of uh, there are going to be a variety of uh, things. We've worked with the, a, a sustainability uh, committee. So the building is gonna be more insulated. The building is gonna have many solar panels. The building is gonna have um, uh, a lot of uh, windows which are gonna allow sunlight and warmth to come into this building. Uh, right now, we have an HVAC, HVAC system in our building which is failing. So the building will be adequately, uh, the building will be adequately cooled. Uh, the way in which the building is being constructed, so we're not using steel beams, we're using cross laminated timber, is designed to minimize the carbon output uh, during the process of construction. So the hope is that in the building of the new uh, renovated expanded library, as well as in the maintenance of the library and its day to day operation, it's more than a hope. This library will be uh, one of the greenest buildings if not the greenest building in uh, Amherst, and will certainly be a model of env environmental sustainability in libraries throughout the Commonwealth. Great, thank you for that question and for that answer, Austin. Again, feel free to raise your hand or put questions in the q and I'm gonna start with uh, some of the questions that we have here. I've heard this one a couple of times. So have all the legal challenges to the project been resolved? Are there any impediments to moving forward at full speed now? Uh, all of the legal challenges have been resolved. All of the appeals periods have expired. So there are no legal impediments for moving forward and we're full steam ahead. Great, thank you, very clear. I have a hand from Martha. So Martha, if you could unmute and introduce yourself um, and feel free to ask your question. Hi, I'm Martha Hanner, Amherst resident, and it's really exciting to hear about our, our expanded library. And I would just like to know what concrete efforts are you making to involve high school students in the design process? I'm wondering, for example, whether one or two students might actually be invited to be members of the design subcommittee. You talk about a teen room, but but really having them actually involved in the process of designing would certainly be something very, very great. 
Yeah, so uh, let me start and then Austin can follow up because Austin is on the outreach subcommittee. Um, so the out outreach subcommittee, they are just starting to work on their processes and they're, they're planning a couple of, of big events uh, coming up where people will be able to come to the library and talk. But I think outreach to the schools is going to be, um, and, and the students, teachers and students and families, that will be a large part of this because um, absolutely we need the teenagers at, at the table and, and telling us um, their ideas. Uh, Austin, do you want to talk more about the uh, committee? It, it's, it, it really is a wonderful question and I'm really grateful for the, uh, for the question. The outreach uh, subcommittee uh, right now is really in the early stages of figuring out the kind of outreach that we're going to do and the most effective uh, mechanisms. Uh, what Sharon said uh, right at the start of her remarks is that we want this library to be a library in which all segments of the community feel a sense of ownership, that this is their library. So it's not just with teenagers that we're going to be uh, working. We're going to be working with uh, communities throughout the city, throughout the town, uh, but we'll do it in, I think, more specialized meetings rather than adding membership to the um, outreach, uh, the outreach subcommittee. So when we're talking about the team room, uh, we will be making special efforts, obviously, to engage uh, the teen population of the town. When we're talking about the children's room, we we'll want to make special efforts to engage um, uh, families with children. When we're talking about special collections, we want to make special efforts to uh, involve people who care particularly about historic uh, preservation. So rather than just adding communities uh, you know, to, the, uh, to the committee, it's our hope that we can design processes uh, that will involve them both throughout the process and also in those particular moments when the part of the library that they are most concerned about is being discussed. Okay, thank All you. Right. Great, thank you, Martha, for your question. Okay, next we have um, something that's, I guess, on everybody's mind, but we hear that inflation is driving all con construction costs up significantly. Is the project being adjusted in light of this? Well, I can tell, I'll start. Okay. So we have a, we have a, we have a, um, a, a fixed budget at this point. Um, it's our, part of our process will be again, as I said, to look at the schematics and to go through design development. Along the way, we're gonna be asked to make choices. And some of those choices will be different in 2022 than they would have been in 2016 or 2015. Uh, uh, early on when we conceptualized this, uh, this process, uh, inflation is a fact of life and it's gonna affect everything that the town does, not just in the building project for the uh, for the library, it will necessitate some difficult choices and some even more energized fundraising uh, for our for our project. Paul, do you want to say anything else about the inflation? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this, we we are noticing that inflation is ticking up. Um, you know, in, interest rates are ticking up very slightly as well. Uh, those are all cost adds to what we hoped would be where we are on the project. Um, that's not just for this project, it's for every project. We're dealing with the, with the school building project. We're dealing with it with um, road construction projects, quite, quite frankly, which is very oil dependent industry. So it's just a fact of life, uh, as Austin said, and it's something that we manage through. And we won't be able to do as much as we, as many roads as we might want to do otherwise. But um, you know, we manage in other ways too, but we, we, those costs have to be incorporated into the existing project. And it's not, it's not the nice, it's not just to this project, it's to everything that we're doing, um, even supplies that we're looking at now. Well, this, this next question is kind of related uh, to the increasing project costs, but um, how is the fundraising proceeding and has that target been increased to compensate for the, the growing costs? Uh, so our, our capital campaign committee is, is absolutely uh, working uh, to reach to reach our goals. They, the goal has not changed. Um, 
and as far as what we are success so far. So we've raised over $1.5 million. That's towards our $3.3 million community com component. Um, so you combine that with the 1 million from CPA. And so we've raised a total of 2.5 million towards the 6.6 .6 million goal. Um, one of the important pieces of this process will be applying for grants. Um, and so we have, for example, we submitted a Massachusetts Cultural Facilities Fund grant in the amount of $500,000. And I, I think we have more than one year to be able to apply for that. Uh, we just submitted a, a grant for the Beverage uh, Foundation um, and we're working with local and state legislators on, on additional funding. And, you know, because we have so many special interests regarding this project, whether it's historic preservation or sustainability, accessibility, there are different grant uh, opportunities out there for these different pieces. Okay, great. Another reminder to our live attendees, uh, please feel free. We've got another nine or so minutes. So please enter your questions. You can type them into Q&A or raise your hand. Um, I have a question here that I think I meant to ask when I did the legal challenges question, but just quickly, uh, maybe this will be for Paul. Is the attorney general investigating contracts related to this project as was reported recently? Could you explain? No, the attorney general is not doing any investigations. Uh, we typically, when we are doing contracts for major construction projects or anything, we do review all of our um, steps that we take um, with our legal counsel, with anybody at the state that has to look at it, Mass Board of Library Commissioners. Uh, we also review it with our bond counsel because at some point we will be going into the market to be borrowing money. And we just are always asking the questions, are we all in good shape? And that's uh, where we are at this point in time is continuing to do our due diligence. But there is no investigation going on or anything like that that I'm aware of. Maybe there is a, a secret, but I don't know of any. Jeff says, thanks for clarifying. Uh, Jeff typed that question as I was asking you. Someone else had also <laughs> Thank submitted you, Jeff. it. So <laughs> it's out there. Um, okay. So I'm going to have, let me see, my next question here. Um, what's going to happen when the library is under construction? Will we still be able to go to the branches? Yeah, actually. So the branches are going to be our number one uh, um, place where we will start. Uh, both of the branches, uh, the North Amherst Library Project, you know, that addition uh, project should be complete by the time we need to move out of here. So we will be able to utilize that new meeting room space for collections, for programs, technology. So both branches will be uh, staffed more. Their open hour schedules will be increased. And, and then uh, we will also be looking for other spaces. Uh, the two branches aren't large enough to hold everything that the Jones does. Um, the staff have put together a spreadsheet uh, of their, their space needs, and we've given that to the OPM, and the OPM will, will work with the town to, to see what, what spaces in town um, are available, and, and then we'll go from there. But definitely library services, staffing, programming, technology, all of that will still be uh, happening during construction. All right, thank you, Sharon. So this, Austin spoke a little bit about this, I think when you were talking about the outreach committee's work, but this question is, um, is the design set are there, is there still time for me to weigh in on things that I think the library should include? So the answer to the question is um, no and yes, but, but I'm a college professor and I need to go on for a little while longer than no and yes. So the design is not set. There are certain things that we cannot change. There are certain basic things that we had to, to get approved by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, the kind of basic footprint of the building the program for the library, those things are not gonna change. But as I indicated earlier, uh, we're in the phase where we'll be soon reviewing again the schematics, going into design development. There'll be ample opportunity for people to weigh in, for example, on details of things that are gonna go on in those, um, in those rooms. I also wanna say something else about this opportunity for people to weigh in. Uh, the town had a vigorous and very engaged debate about this project. We are incredibly grateful for the commitment of citizens throughout the town 
and their vibrant engagement, engagement with the question of whether we should go ahead with the project that we proposed. Those debates seem to me now to be over. And it's our hope going forward that the energy that was brought to the debate about whether or not we should go forward with this project can now be brought to the question of making it the library that everybody wants it to be. So it's our hope through the building committee process, through the design process, and through the outreach process that the love that everybody has for this library will bring us together to work together and hear each other's voices as we go through this very exciting process of making the Jones Library yet again the crown jewel of uh, the town. Excellent, thank you, Austin, well said. So I have a question that just came in live and we're coming up on the last few minutes. So anyone else who's live in the room who wanted to get something out, uh, this is your chance. Please put it into the Q&A or raise your hand. Um, so next I have, what are the immediate next tasks, for example, over the next six months for the building committee on this project to tackle? Uh, definitely working with the architect, um, ending schematic design, going into design development. Great, and uh, we have another question here from Martha, and it, actually this is normally what we end on, so this is perfect. Martha asks, perhaps you can mention websites for people to leave ideas. Um, so that is a great prompt for us. Um, someone else asked, how do I stay up to date on this project? Um, so I'm happy to share a couple different ways right now that you can. Um, as both Austin and Sharon mentioned earlier, the outreach committee for the Jones Library Building Project is just getting started. So there are gonna be much more opportunities that those are gonna get fleshed out. Um, but to get started, to, to look at some of the materials that have been compiled and you know, really well done, I, I will say, uh, on the Jones Library side is joneslibrary.org slash building project. Go there and really everything that's happened about this project um, is there and it's a lot of information to digest. So it's a great place to start uh, for committees for the Jones Library Building Committee and their subcommittees. You can go to amherstma.gov slash JLBC, which stands for Jones Library Building Committee. There you'll find all of the the meeting minutes, packet materials, um, agendas, those types of um, those types of things. And as the outreach committee um, starts getting, you know, having more meetings and has to get their planning out there, there could be other specific things to to better answer you, Martha, about how you can leave ideas or how you can interact with the project. So, stay tuned uh, to the outreach committee for those types of things. All right. Well. Oh, make sure there's no other questions. I don't see any other live questions. We've just got about two minutes left. So I'm going to um, ask Paul, Sharon, Austin to leave us with anything they didn't get asked or something they want to say, a call to action for, for those watching and for those who will watch later. Yeah, just, I just want to thank you, Brianna. I know you've been under the weather, but you powered through our session here today. So thanks for teeing up to be here. <laughs> anything for the library. Right. <laughs> I want to say one thing I need to give a, a, for all of the all of you who would like to donate to the project. Uh, you can either go to the library's website. There's a big old donate button uh, that you could click on. There's also a printed form you could fill out mail back. Um, if you have any specific questions about, you know, giving stock or 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 donating from your IRA, you can email info at Jones Library Capital Campaign dot org. Thank you. It's beginning to feel like WFCR, it's a fundraising appeal. So I just uh, want to again thank Brianna for, for this and thank Paul, thanks to town for, for doing this. Um, the library has been very fortunate in having a wonderful partnership with the leadership of this town, with the town manager, with the finance director, with the assistant town manager, with the town council and its distinguished um, leadership. That's helped propel the project and made uh, the work on the project truly uh, a partnership. And there are many, 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 many people that one could thank and point to who've played uh, really great roles in getting us to where we are. 
this is an incredibly exciting moment for this town. The renovation and expansion of the Jones Library will be the first time since the new police station, I believe, mm -hmm. that a significant town building has been developed, or in this case, renovated um, and expanded. The renovated and expanded Jones Library will be designed to serve citizens, residents, and visitors to this town for generations to come. And, but for the vision, commitment, energy, dedication, and optimism of our library director, none of this would have been, uh, would, would have been possible. So great thanks to Sharon Sherry for her leadership uh, throughout the project. But I'm still not gonna give you any money, so it's okay. <laughs> Well, thank you for those words, Austin. That was a nice way to, to end our session. I want to thank all of our live attendees for being here today. This recording will be up on our playlist shortly. We'll share it on social media. It'll probably end up on the Jones Library Building Project page. So um, feel free to share it with friends who weren't able to make it today. And thank, thank you, you to everyone. our special guests. Yes. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thanks.